I was able to study at the feet of who I thought was the greatest monetary uh, economist, uh, Professor Milton Friedman, who, who was my colleague uh, at Chicago. Uh, his last four years were 72 to 76. Um, and those were actually the four years I spent at Chicago. Um, I had many lunches, dinners with him. I remember two things he told me that were so important. He said, Jeremy, from a year-to-year -year basis, money and inflation will not correlate well. But he said, if you ever have a big burst of money, you can be sure there will be inflation 12 to 18 months later. He also said that over long periods of time, if you had money growing way faster than the growth of the economy, you're going to have inflation spill over there. Again, not a close uh, correlation short run, um, but those two things are um, my empirical research really uh, was, uh, seemed to be very convincing on those points. Um, uh, so here we have the pandemic of, that began, was, as we all know, in March of 2020. Um, I follow monetary theory and policy of the Fed and all the rest. Um, money supply had sort of fallen out of, of uh, consideration after we conquered inflation in the, in the 1970s. And Paul Volcker squeezed it, brought the interest rate really high. Money supply, which was growing at 10% a year in the 70s and early 80s, went down to a 34-year period, actually, of money growing at only 5.5% a year, which is pretty much what theory would say is consistent with a 2 two to 3% growing economy plus a 2 3% inflation rate, as you know, the most basic quantity theory. Then we have March 2020. Um, and we have an explosion of money and spending. Um, you know, no one knew what was going to happen. And I don't fault the Fed for the explosion of money that occurred between March 2020 and July 2020. By the way, there was a 17.5% in M2 money growth, which is the broad measure that Milton Friedman thought was the most important. Never before had we seen such a spurt during that period of time. What I faulted the Fed was that even when the economy was really beginning to recover strongly, the Fed continued to uh, increase the money supply at double digit rates, I think was actually uh, 11 percent per year, uh, all the way until March 2022. So in those two years, from March 2020 to March 2022, we had a, a, about the biggest two-year increase in money supply in our history. I know the year 2020 itself, with over 20 percent, was the biggest single year since um, 1875, 1865, when Milton Friedman started his right after the Civil War. So I was very convinced right away, April, May, June, I began to write commentaries, articles, we're going to have a lot of inflation. This inflation is not temporary. There's, I mean, I, you know, when we know about the supply chain and disruption, but the money was supporting it, the speculation, I mean, in the markets, we all saw what was happening. Stock markets started going up strong, speculative stocks even more. Um, uh, real estate, actually the biggest two-year increase in real estate prices from March 2020 to March 2022, 45% um, on the case shiller India. I, I mean, the money was, and that's what Friedman said. At first, it's going to go into speculative assets and, you know, real estate, all that sort of thing. So now... You know, and, and we know, I mean, I, the Fed finally admitted the pivot was, you know, way too late, began talking about it in, you know, November, and then finally it wasn't done until March 2022. Um, it, was, it, it was there, and, and inflation did follow 12, 18 months later. So I was really critical of that. Now, um, then I was worried that the Fed slammed on the brakes too high because looking at, again, the money supply, mm -hmm. not only did it, you know, slow down back to, I thought, which should be 5%, it actually started declining. And we actually had about a 4 or 5% decline in M2 money supply from March of 2022 to March of 2023. That alarmed me. It was the first year-to-year, year-over-year supply and money supply. 
that we had had since, um, since Civil World War II, actually. And I said, oh my God, this could lead to that. And then in March of uh, you know, uh, 2023, when you know, SVB went under, and then I said, this is the beginning of this. Um, and I was very, very worried. I said, the Fed should just stop because they don't know how much th th this decline I, I said that it was like the Fed was speeding on a highway 130 miles an hour in the 70 zone and said, oh my God, I'm going too fast, and then slams on the brakes. Um, and, you know, I said, you know, there's a danger of just going through the window. 